The future of PC gaming is rapidly evolving, with innovations in hardware tech propelling gameplay to new limits year after year. Whether you're a professional gamer, a PC builder, or a weekend warrior, today, right here in the next hour, you will be introduced to some of the newest improvements for your gaming battle station. We've got product launches, we've got gear showcases, and we've even got an amazing PC build giveaway to take your gameplay to the next level. Together with our partner, Seagate Gaming is leading gamers through the next great technology evolution. This is our declaration to beginners and pros alike that the future of gaming is here, and we've got the tools to keep you at the forefront. Welcome to SG21. I'm your host, Justin Roby, founder of Roby Tech, and as a lifelong PC gamer and having built hundreds of custom PCs myself, I've seen the evolution of gameplay take its biggest leap in the last five years. And Seagate has often been ahead of the curve and are continually pushing gameplay performance forward. Whether it's hard drives, gaming SSDs, or their innovations in docking stations and expansion storage, Seagate is proving to be leading in PC and console gaming storage. And today, at the inaugural SG21, Seagate is partnering with leaders across the entire PC industry to show both the casual hobbyist and the full-time streaming pro what the future of PC gaming looks like. And friends, the future is fast. So here's a snapshot of what today will look like. It's a day centered around the latest advancements in component connection, specifically PCIe Gen 4, unlocking faster speeds, crisper graphics, and insane processing power. Right here, we're going to introduce Seagate's newest, fastest PCIe Gen 4 SSD. We've got EK Waterblock with us to present some amazing innovations in cooling technology for your Gen 4 components. We've got the team at AMD here to talk about how they are blazing new paths of performance with CPU and GPU advancements. We'll have a deep dive discussion into the future of PC gameplay with the pioneers at MSI Gaming. We've got the legendary Dead Mouse with us to talk about his obsession with gaming. We've got CD Projekt Red with us, unpacking the importance of NVMe SSDs in their game development. And our friends at Razer are stopping by to showcase the latest RGB integrations for your battle station setup. And finally, what would a PC gaming showcase be without building a high performance rig? That's right, Seagate is collaborating with all of our industry leaders and system integrators in this event to build a brand new, fully custom, blazing fast PCIe Gen 4 gaming desktop, which we are going to be giving away to one lucky winner right here today. Seagate recently hosted this giveaway at Seagate.com, and today is the day that we'll be announcing the name of the person who is taking home this amazing, cutting-edge machine. So stay with us. A packed hour of PC gaming innovation awaits. And on behalf of Seagate and all of our partners, thank you for joining us at SG21. Let's get gaming. Seagate has been a pioneer in gaming storage for both PCs and consoles for years. Their Firecuda gaming SSDs have been the backbone of any serious gamer system. If you've got a Firecuda NVMe installed in your motherboard, then you know what fast and efficient looks like. But folks, get ready for even faster with the introduction of Seagate's new Firecuda 530. When PCIe Gen 4 first roared into gaming in 2019, it set the bar for speed and performance. But if you know anything about Seagate, we don't like to settle. We took a look at PCIe Gen 4 and knew we could push our tech even further. We are talking faster processing, bigger games, better graphics, a new and stronger gameplay. And we are not just unlocking a new level of ultra-powerful performance for PCs, it's bringing unprecedented gameplay to consoles at the same time. 
No more console to PC delays for your favorite titles. No more bottlenecking for development for new game styles or formats. Just unbelievable gaming across the board, right into your home. All this power, all this performance, all this speed needs a dominant SSD. That's why we're proud to introduce you to the Seagate FireCuda 530 SSD. PC builders and gamers demand the highest performance products. And in meeting these growing standards, our team has outdone themselves. Let's start with the NAND technology. PCIe Gen 4 is wielding a lot of raw power and it takes the pinnacle of NAND technology to harness its greatest potential. We've put a top-of-the-line 3D TLC NAND and Fizon's E18 controller inside the FireCuda 530, allowing the CPU, memory, and storage to all put in work simultaneously and faster than ever. I mean, when you talk about speed, this SSD redefines what speed is for gamers. The FireCuda 530 hits speeds of up to 7.3 gigabytes per second. That's two times faster than PCIe Gen 3 SSDs and 12 times faster than SATA SSDs. So when you think of a PCIe Gen 4 SSD, it's really easy to focus on speed, and speed we have in spades. 7.3 gigs per second is a ridiculous amount of speed. It's basically to the theoretical max of PCIe Gen 4, but speed's just not enough. If you're recording, and if you're playing a lot of games, you're downloading a lot of content, you're clearing your drive to make space, endurance is critical. And what we mean by endurance is, is how much you can read and write on the drive. That's why we zeroed in our focus on building a high endurance drive and ensured we could hit up to 5,100 total terabytes per second. That means you can write and delete 70% of the drive's capacity every day for five years. So if you've got a 1TB FireCuda 530 installed, you can transfer 700 gigabytes every single day for five years straight. That's a crazy amount of data transfer. We're not using lower grade NAND, which lets you write to it fewer times, 0.3 times is typically the industry standard. And we're at 0.7 times, which gives you that 700 gigabyte write per day. So at the end of the day, if you're worried about that, you're investing in this really high performance piece. And the last thing you want to have on your mind is when is this piece going to fail me? With the FireCuda 530, you don't have to worry about that because you have the combination of speed as well as the endurance. It's a really unique trait to it. From capturing gameplay and recording live streams to editing video content, our PC rigs aren't just for gaming. We know that gamers and content creators work with a lot of data, and FireCuda 530 Endurance frees you to write and delete content to your heart's desire. Our team built a drive that could stand up to long-term abuse and keep running at max speeds. You're constantly scanning Steam, GOG, or Epic looking for the newest titles to download. You download and install a bunch of games you can't wait to jump into. With NVMe Speed, those installs happen faster, and in-game load times really do become a thing of the past. With performance like that, endurance like that, speeds like that, we're about to set the gaming world on fire. And while early adoption might look like crisper graphics and faster load times, the future of bigger games, tighter rendering, and faster plays at our fingertips. I kind of nerd out when I when I think about um, PC components, because I am a system builder, and we're not cutting corners. It's a no compromise product. That's the coolest thing about this, is when you look at it, we're using you know, essentially enterprise grade NAND in a consumer gaming product. So it, it stands well above what gamers are gonna expect right now. We are using the latest and greatest components, the latest CPU, the latest graphics. So you also wanna use the latest storage because you wanna make sure that the storage never becomes your bottleneck. We focus 100% on what gamers want. We define what a console gamer needs, what a PC gamer needs, what's the newest technology coming out with component manufacturers. A lot of effort from our team goes into picking the NAND, picking the controller, qualifying, making sure it gets the best performance possible at launch. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into the development of this product, and it's, it's very exciting to finally be at the cusp of release and be able to get this product that we've spent so much time and effort and love into, into the market and share it with the rest of the world. This piece of hardware 
is gonna outlast your current rig. It's gonna go with you to your next rig and it's gonna be just as fast and you're gonna be able to ride it just as many times and game on it and then move on with you well in the future. That's the cool part about jumping in at this phase of the game. A new bar has been set in the world of gaming SSDs. And with Firecuda 530, you'll dominate gameplay well into the future. I cannot wait to get my hands on one of those. The Fire Cuda 530 will be shipping this summer, so you will not have to wait either to make your PC upgrade. But all of that SSD performance comes with heat. And for your custom PC to operate at peak performance, you need to manage all that heat. So let's talk to EK Waterblock, the leaders in PC cooling, to see what new innovations in heat management they're excited about. Hey there, I'm Ryan Schlieper, Product Lifecycle Manager at Seagate, and I'm pleased to welcome Kat Silverstein, EK CEO for the Americas. Thank you for joining us today, Kat. Hello, Ryan. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. We're thrilled to have you, and we were beyond excited to be able to collaborate with EK. As far as we at Seagate are concerned, EK is the gold standard when it comes to liquid cooling for your PC and thermal management. When you first presented us with your plans for the FireCuda 530 SSD, we were floored by the level of pure performance that you packed into this device. We were quite excited by the challenge of helping Firecuda's thermal management. Yep, and as we just discussed with the reveal of our newest PCIe Gen 4 drive, the Firecuda 530 SSD works at two times the rate of PCIe Gen 3. And with all that extra performance comes a lot of extra heat. That's correct. And for any gamer or content creator, once your CPU or GPU starts thermal throttling, basically running hotter than what the cooling can handle, you're going to start losing performance and frames. So to keep your PC running at an optimal rate, you've got to keep your CPU, GPU, and NVMe cooled properly. Precisely. And that's why we reached out to EK to help develop a custom heatsink for our Firecuda 530. As a system builder myself, I know that anyone who is truly serious about keeping their PC cool and running smoothly will turn to liquid cooling to solve any issues with unwanted heat. And if you're looking for liquid cooling and expertise in PC thermal management, you look to the precision-made products of EK. I think we can both agree that the open, collaborative spirit of both companies is what allowed the Firecuda 530 heatsink SSD to really sink. Now let's hear from the actual EK team in Slovenia that helped bring this product to life. Hello, my name is Sandy Logar and I'm Head of Enterprise Business Unit at EK. I'd like to start this intro by expressing how extremely proud we are that such a very respected industry player as Seagate has teamed up with us. But I can only speak for myself, here is the rest of the team. For me, this experience has been incredible. From the moment Seagate approached us with the exclusive co-branding partnership offer to actually working together, our collaboration has been absolutely mind-blowing. There have been so many great ideas and no challenge has been too big to solve together. Their open-minded, transparent approach and can-do attitude is something you don't see very often. We were always on the same page. For example, Seagate's team immediately knew which design to go with when we pitched the options to them. And yes, it was our favorite choice as well. Seagate knows exactly what they want and they are very driven to achieve it. I love the level of trust we share. We never waste the time and we are all incredibly ambitious. From my side, thank you for being part of this story. Let me tell you a few things about DK. For the last 15 years, we have been pushing the limits with constant innovation, a strong R&D department and more than 300 custom loop products launched per year. We are very proud to have created partnership with AMD, MSI, NVIDIA, Intel and many other silent partners. With that same passion, we listen to our community and give them support. As a result, we are proud to have developed the most loyal community on the market. We are also excited to announce that we have just won two IF Design Awards. And what I consider the most important part, 
We are helping our industry develop by elevating computers. We also face big questions like, could our cooling expertise really provide difference to the heatsink as well? It was a bit challenging to create a closed assembly that could accommodate two different form factors of Fire CUDA 530 SSDs. This was especially true when taking into account typical motherboard keep-out zones around the M.2 and PCI Express slots and the small dimensions of the drive itself while still keeping the overall design and performance that both EK and Seagate are known for. Let me show you. The point where the part starts to thermal throttle has moved up, which allows the user to transfer more data at the highest possible speed. This is a product with a sleek, minimalistic design that is aligned with EK standards while following the recognizable and iconic Fire CUDA design language. All of it comes together to integrate well into the whole computer build. From my part, I had a lot of work to do, uh, so thank you for that, Seagate. Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, see you next time. The end result of our collaboration? Two passionate companies with equally passionate individuals created a bond that felt like an old friendship. Devotion to our purpose, mutual trust and an inner drive to serve and be the best version you can be for our community and fans. This is who we are together. Seagate, never change. Let's continue to push the limits together. It's been absolutely awesome to have been part of this collaborative process. The level of thought and partnership between the EK and Seagate teams on this project has been phenomenal. I think that's a testament to what Seagate brought to EK, that once the FireCuda 530 heatsink SSD is in the hands of gamers, not only is it simple to use, it also looks amazing and brings unparalleled performance that next-gen gamers are thirsty for. On behalf of our team, thank you. It was a pleasure to collaborate. Ryan, the pleasure was all ours. We are proud to have been able to contribute to this exciting project. And we're looking forward to working on new projects in the future. Thanks, Kat. Let's send it back to Justin for more of SG21. They built a custom heatsink for the Fire Cuda 530. That's awesome. I cannot stress enough the importance of heat management. So definitely check out all of the PC cooling tech that EK has to offer. All right, we've got the SSD for peak speeds. We've got the cooling tech for efficiency. Now let's talk about what's at the core of any gaming PC. And here's AMD to talk about processors and graphics cards for the brave new world of PCIe Gen 4. Hi, my name is Erin Mayorino, and I'm the Ryzen Desktop Product Marketing Manager at AMD. And I'm so excited to be here to talk the Seagate Fire CUDA 530 and the power and bandwidth that PCIe 4.0 brings. AMD supports the largest number of PCIe Gen 4 enabled platforms in the entire PC industry, spanning from entry, mid-range, and high-end desktop markets. And we were the first to bring Gen 4 to these markets with our Ryzen and Threadripper brands. We first kicked off this support starting back in 2019, when we launched our third gen Ryzen Threadripper processors with our X570 motherboards. Then we kept that momentum going and offered the unprecedented IO that comes with our third gen Ryzen Threadripper processors and that TRX40 chipset. And then we wanted to bring PCIe 4.0 to everyone. And with that, we brought in our B550 motherboards, offering 20 lanes of PCIe 4.0 bandwidth off the processor to connect the most advanced GPUs and NVMEs like the Seagate Fire CUDA 530 out there. Then finally, we launched the AMD Ryzen 5000 series processors, the world's fastest gaming desktop processors out there, all with PCIe 4.0 support. AMD has over 100 500 series motherboards, thanks to our great partners like MSI, to provide a robust system where you can build any gaming rig out there and any config to fit your exact needs and get that blazing fast performance as well. In addition, our AMD Radeon RX 5000 and 6000 series graphics cards support this bandwidth. 
basically, if you're a gamer out there, you're going to want to go with AMD and Seagate to get your maximum performance out of your system, as well as be the envy of all your friends. And we know gamers out there are content creators as well, wanting to show off their clips where they 1v5 and clutch a game to share with their friends and post on social media. PCIe 4.0 bandwidth helps when it comes to content creation, providing better and faster performance when scrubbing through large video files as well. So, who is this technology for? Gamers and content creators out there who want the best of the best. And with AMD Ryzen processors and a Seagate Fire CUDA 530 SSD, that is exactly what you'll get. PCIe Gen 4 is changing everything. SSDs, GPUs, CPUs, and it's only going to get better. And to bring it all together in your own system, you need the best motherboard, the foundation on which all is built. Now here to talk to us about PCIe Gen 4 motherboards and the future of gameplay is a leader of the PC building pack, MSI Gaming. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. I'm Mike, and I'm here together with the one and only... Eric, today. <laughs> yeah, today we're going to talk about some cool hardware. First of all, thank you, Seagate, for having us in your event. Yes. Uh, because, of course, we're all here for the, the new Seagate uh, launch with their new Fire CUDA 530. Um, but only an SSD is not enough, of course. You need something to run that SSD on. And we've so, got plenty of that at Amazon. Yeah, so maybe first, uh, I mean, maybe not everybody knows uh, who we are, we are MSI. This is what we used to be. A motherboard yeah, and I mean, card in the past we made uh, motherboards and uh, graphic cards. We still do. Uh, they <laughs> were very colorful. <laughs> and now we make motherboard and graphics cards, which are, yeah, well, they have less colors, right? They have colors in the, in the lights now. <laughs> yeah, it's all RGB. <laughs> yeah, all RGB. Because RGB makes things faster. Exactly. Let's talk about um, games, because uh, we already said it, we're a gaming brand. and. Uh, Games are getting huge. And this all takes time to load. So what you need is a big and fast storage device. And we're going to show you what you should have, what the best for this is. <laughs> so um, yeah, of course, we're going to talk today about uh, motherboards, about uh, PCI Express, Gen 4. At this moment, there are already more than 30 uh, AMD Gen 4 capable motherboards in the market. Yeah, because AMD launched their Gen 4 motherboard, well, their Gen 4 chipsets in 2019. So it's oh, two years of motherboards already. So, for example, B550, X570, TRX40 all support PCI Express Gen 4. You have um, one over there. You can show, I, right? I have three over here. Three. I actually have my test set up. Uh, you can see it on the background. It runs the MEG B550 Unify. Then in front of me, I have the uh, MEG X570 Tomahawk Wi Fi. Yeah, let's take a look. This is our MAG X570 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. So, of course, based on the X570 chipset. Then and that one comes with two or three M.2 two M2 slots? Two M.2 uh, slots. This is our MAG B550 Unify. So even though it's a B550 chipset, it's still a very high-end motherboard. And this one is very special because it can run uh, three Gen 4 SSDs, an additional uh, Gen 3 SSD, so four M.2 SSDs in total. Grab this big boy, because this is our Creator TRX40. And this is, of course, for AMD's high-end desktop platform. And this one can run three Gen 4 SSDs uh, on the motherboard itself. But does it's it, not does it. it come with your fingerprints, or are they normally not included? No, they're usually not included. <laughs> OK, OK. <laughs> Only on special requests. Yeah. And this one comes with a cool adding card. Uh, and this will give you an additional four M.2 slots. It's an M.2 Expander Aero Gen 4 adding card. Um, so combined with the uh, Creator TRX40 motherboard, it gives you seven uh, Gen 4 M.2 slots. Yeah, so there you can see when you open it up, you just get four additional slots. 
Yeah, so today we're not going this crazy. We're only going to limit ourselves to three SSDs, right? <laughs> limit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so B550 chipset, uh, of course, also supports PCI Express Gen 4. Um, and we did a very cool trick with this motherboard because usually you have your uh, primary um, M.2 slot and your uh, graphics card slot, your uh, PCI Express um, 60, X16 slot. They are Gen 4 supported. Um, but because today's graphics cards, they um, well, they don't need all the bandwidth that PCI Express Gen 4 can provide. Uh, so the trick we did with this motherboard is that basically we're taking half the lanes off the graphics card. So you get eight PCI Express Gen 4 lanes for the graphics card, which is still plenty for high-end cards nowadays. Yeah. Um, and the other eight lanes we're using for two additional um, M.2 slots uh, that then can also support the Gen 4 yeah. interface. So uh, soon. We will also release some new X570 boards. We call them X570S because they're uh, passive cooled. Uh, the first generation X570 boards all had a fan. So fully silent. Yeah, and uh, a lot of these boards have more M.2 slots. Uh, so you're talking about uh, two to three to even, maybe four. We will see when yeah. it's released. <laughs> okay, so uh, Mike, you're going to do uh, some benchmarks. You have over there the new. Yeah. The very new Seagate Fire CUDA 530 Gen 4 SSDs. I have two of them here, but that's not all because I have three of them in my test setup here. So here are some benchmarks. Uh, so uh, hard drive, not that fast. I mean, it's fast for hard drive, but I mean, generally, how fast, Mike? It's like, yeah, if you got a faster one, it goes over 200 me megabytes per second. Um, but yeah, for it's, it's okay for storage, like your, your uh, family photos, etc. Okay. But if you have very big games, you of course want very fast loading times, and that's where SSDs come in. Yeah, so uh, we also benchmarked a, a SATA SSD. So the first SSDs were all based on SATA, same connector like a uh, uh, hard drive. Yeah. And yeah, this was, yeah, I mean, it was twice as fast as hard drive, but. It's limited by the SATA interface, so you will see that um, even the fastest models, they can only do what the SATA interface can do, and yeah. then they get bottlenecked. And so uh, one of the other things we benchmarked was a USB 20 gig uh, Fire CUDA gaming, which was really fast. External, uh, USB interface. Yeah, uh, so well, let me quickly grab the Creator TRX40 again. So this one, for example, has that USB 20 me, gigabit per yeah. second port. It's a Type-C port. Uh, USB 20G is always Type-C. So something to keep in mind. Um, if you're running a fast drive like that, connect it to the right connector. Let's focus on this uh, Fire CUDA SSD, the uh, one terabyte. Uh, so let's remember that one. And uh, we also did some benchmarks uh, at that moment during our live stream uh, on the Gen 3 NVMe M.2 device, which was much faster. Yeah, here you see a big difference. And this is just already the, the, the difference in the interface, because SATA can uh, just not go faster um, than basically what we're seeing here. So 500, 550, that's basically where SATA maxes out. Um, and with uh, PCI Express Gen 3, if you have four lanes, uh, you can already go beyond 3,000 megabytes per second. So yeah. big step up. Indeed. Uh, but Seagate also, of course, has a Firecuda 520. Benchmark that one as well, because we did this live stream around the launch of the Firecuda 520. And that one has a uh, yeah, very good improvement. Uh, that, that one uh, impressed us really at that moment. Yeah, so that one was part of the first wave of Gen 4 SSDs. And there you can already see a big step up compared to uh, Gen 3. And that's also because of the interface, of course, but also faster controllers, faster uh, flash memory. Um, but in total, it gives you like um, around 50% or even more increase when comparing this to the, to the fastest Gen 3 SSDs on the market. Okay, so uh, let's uh, forget the SATA SSD and let's focus as an, an NVMe device. So Mike, you're now going to do some live benchmark, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, so in this system, um, I've got the MEG B550 Unify motherboard with uh, an AMD Ryzen 9 uh, 5950X, which of course also supports PCI Express Gen 4. Um, then I got, in total, I have three of the new Firecuda 530 SSDs installed. Um, but let's first just take a look at, at what a single one can already do. Yeah. I have one boot drive, um, just a SATA SSD in this situation. Uh, but that's fine for the benchmarks we're running. Then we have disk one, that's um, the Firecuda 530 that we will benchmark now. And disk two and three are also Firecuda 530 drives. All of them are two terabytes. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at the speed that this can deliver. 
So this is a uh, crystal disc mark. It's a uh, very fast but uh, accurate uh, benchmark to give you an idea how fast your storage is. But in real life, of course, this always depends on what kind of uh, windows, a game, how big the files are. I mean, uh, it really differs per application. Yeah, and right now we're um, measuring the read and the write speeds of the SSD. And if you remember the speeds that the, the first uh, wave of Gen 4 uh, SSDs like the Firecuda 520 could provide, um, you can see this is already a big step up. We, we run these benchmarks before and it's actually faster, the, the, the benchmark uh, which Mike now run, than the results here. But yeah, uh, wow, big yeah. improvement. Very fast. So from around 5,000 um, uh, megabytes per second read speeds, we're all already going well beyond 7,000. Um, yeah. So almost a 50% increase again, and we yeah. already saw the 50% increase from Gen 3 up. So in total, we're, we're getting more than double the speed that we were getting from uh, Gen 3 SSDs. What's the nice part of RAID on these devices, it scales really well. So basically you're seeing <laughs> double the speeds with two SSDs, because you're running two times the Gen 4 times 4 interface. Um, so basically you get the bandwidth that PCI Express Gen 4 uh, X8 can provide with eight lanes. So let me take my calculator, Mike. I already know what uh, three SSDs are going to do. <laughs> well, it's quite basic mathematics, right? <laughs> well, there should be some performance loss, not? Uh, not much, actually. <laughs> no, indeed. No, with three of them, of course, you have a total of 12 PCI Express Gen 4 lanes. Um, and if you run them in RAID 0, so you combine the speed of all SSDs, then you can go over 22,000 megabytes per second in read speeds um, and even beyond 19,000 megabytes per second in write speeds. So these are insane speeds. Yeah, really impressive. And this is on a B550 motherboard, by yes. the way. On TRX40, you can do this with even more SSDs because you can run a total of seven SSDs on that motherboard. Yeah. So all we Gen hope uh, this was informative for you guys. Uh, thank you all for watching. Take thank care. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. We all know Deadmau5 is one of the most respected electronic music producers, but Joel is also a massive gamer. And I was so excited to sit down with him and talk about PC builds, gameplay, and the future of gaming. Well, Joel, I want to say thank you so much for taking uh, just the time out of your busy schedule to sit down. Yeah, you're, you're lucky. No, you're welcome. No, oh, I'm wow. kidding. I'm kidding. Wow. I'm kidding. You're lucky. That's that's my new year. Welcome. That's your you're new lucky. year. Lucky. Tell me a little bit about what got you into games. Like, how long have you been gaming? I'm, I'm uh, guessing your entire life, but it felt like one of those. A River Raid, huh? River Raid. Okay. You know. Never played a, that. Atari. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was no. I was sorry. I started as a. I started as a PC gamer. Yeah. So oh, like, oh, my bad. Yeah, we didn't have PCs back in my day. We had. <laughs> we, had uh, we had. We had Commodores. I did too. I'm like, okay, came from the desert too. Yeah. Did you play that? No. No? Okay. That was Commodore. I yeah. played, uh, no, I played um, Gitchy, like uh, Alternate Reality was a fun one. Okay. Uh, it all like Zork, text based oh, that, stuff. There we go. Um, you know, games, nothing really that required. Did you play any of like the Golden Age of Sierra games, like Space? Oh, Flash, oh, Commander Keen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Duke Nukem, like so the side school. Games for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Since okay. games were a thing, but not since Pong. But what, are, what are the kind of games you're playing now? Well, I like, I, I wish, I, I, this is weird. Okay, so the busiest year I've ever had, like as a touring musician, I've just played PUBG every day, seven hours a day. No music came out, nothing got done. Management would be screaming at me. And I'm touring, you know, on weekends and, and doing all this stuff. I just mainline a game and I get like good at it and fun, and, you know, and then, and then that's it. I don't, I don't, hey, what's new on Steam today? You know, and then yeah. go dabble. Cause then I just, I don't like learning. Okay. New games, you know okay. what I mean? I just yeah. want to, like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually good at this. And, and that's a lot, saying a lot with PUBG, you know, it's a lot of, it, it's a really great game. Despite its flaws, it's, it's played, great. I have played a ton of PUBG and it's still one of my, it's probably like, again, it didn't have all the weird mechanics of Fortnite. It's it's actually yeah. pretty straightforward. It's a lot of fun to play. It's easy for other people to kind of pick up and play with. No, I, I mean, I, I, I try to, when, when, when I'm streaming, yeah, I try to keep it fair and interesting, you know, whether I'm doing something wrong or right. But when I'm offline, it's like, I fight dirty. So. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and, uh, and if I were to wow, stream so that, they would be like, bro, we're really they're, getting, they're we're so really... lame. <laughs> so, you don't you can learn to play. Come out and fight. Hey, man, win's a win. From a technology standpoint, at least from like when you think about PCs, like one of the things that you'd love to see is still you have that separation between the machines that you use for your yeah. production and all that sort of stuff. And still there's still that separation between gaming and the two. Right? Yeah, but it's it, but that's squishing together yep. nicely now. Which is nice, and, right? Which is very nice because I can do production level things on, on my gaming rig. Yep. Which is like all I want. Um, I want to have one big computer in my house and do everything on it. Yep. No, I just like to be able to be, you know, like, uh, you know, working away on a project. Doo -doo, hey, yo, let's quick 1v1 on our, yeah, all right, I'll tab. Switch, yeah, yep. done, gone, gaming, you know. And then I, I, I've even got the scene still rendering right. in the background. So it's like 80% of my GPU is dedicated to this render and I'm still playing Rocket League just fine. You have a pretty rocking system, a 5950X. You've yeah. got a PCI Engine 4 NVMe, you got 3090, which pretty much the entire like audience is drooling right now. Yeah, it's a commodity. Yeah, it's a commodity. Yeah, yeah. It is a commodity. Um, but the question is, is like, why? Why the upgrade? What What was it that that brought about getting a new system now? Basically, the 3090 being a you know production level card yeah. uh, for as great as it is for gaming, and no joke. Like I, I haven't dropped a frame in any game I've thrown on it so far, or well, at least that I enjoy. You know. Um, and do you stream and game on the same system yeah. or do you actually have a safe? Okay. Yeah, and that, that was the point of this yep. system because I was like, you know, these 3090s are, are kind of no joke. And um, it's it also stands in as a workhorse, you know, and, and that's what I, I find most attractive about the last like five years is a lot of this, there was a gap of $10,000 yep. between, you know, Pixar level workstation and gamer. And now it's just, you know, kind of meeting it in the middle, you know, where obviously there are some pitfalls to just using the, the gamer card yep. to do like production level stuff. But again, you know, the gap is starting to close a little bit more and that's kind of cool for both the industry and, uh, you know, people who just enjoy games, so. When we think about storage in general and, and basically as technology's kind of improved and gotten better and stuff like that, you've kind of followed this as part of what, what you do on a regular basis as a music producer and DJ and all that yeah. sort of stuff. You wanna talk a little bit about that journey? Well, the, for me, storage has always been kind of a, a weird thing. Cause you know, starting out, like I wasn't really amassing massive files. I mean, music, when, you, when you're making it, you're multi-tracking and stuff like that. So say you had, you know, s seven parts to a song that was seven minutes, right? So you have kick drums this, that, the other thing. Well, you gotta imagine the file size is whatever the song is, right? A whopping 75 meg for like the, the WAV file at uh, 44 one kilohertz right, with right. just raw PCM encoding. You times that by seven. You know, so it was, it was I kind of reached a point where, you know, it's like I'm doing a song a day or, or, or an idea or whether, whether it turned into anything or not, you know, it was just off to, off the Radio Shack, get a get a <laughs> USB drive, you know what I mean? And then every five years or so, I do the whole big, yeah, you know, and then just start poking through them, see looking at there. things, seeing what's on there and stuff. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is, this can't be right, you know? And then um, someone had then talked me into like, oh, you gotta do like uh, cloud storage. Like, yeah. and I tried that and I'm like, mm, it, it, it's not there for me right. yet. Uh, especially with the advent of, you know, 8K, uh, we're, we're doing, you know, audio. Audio, you're right, at 192 kilohertz, best quality, 100 tracks per track, fine. Uh, but we start doing video, uh, all our uh, artist videos, all that stuff, and storage very quickly becomes a, a problem. The speed in which you can get things on to storage or out of storage has become really important. Well, well, there's two things, right? When I'm working locally, it's not really a big deal, yeah, right? It takes. Yeah a few milliseconds to load up a, a, and start streaming right. data, right? But I'm at the mercy of 10 base T. Right. So I can only go as fast as whatever right. is coming through the network. Uh, and that's good and great. Um, but for for things that need to be performant, like real-time applications, like uh, my Cube show or my Previs and stuff like that, I have to take all the stuff that's on the net network and boop it over to the workstation and let it live there, just copy it straight right. up and do my modifications, dump it back when I'm done, which is like standard practice, and I'm okay with that. I need to do that for um, uh, just basically uh, getting terabytes of data onto my monitor, basically, uh, and, and through the application or the ID that I'm using to, to be able to have no 
frame loss. Right. You drop a frame, you're done. Yep. You know, um, some of that stuff can you can get away with, but when it, when it comes to my show, at least for me, it feels like if I'm if I'm dropping a single frame, um, I'm toast. So um, we rely very heavily on like M2 drives and stuff like that to be able to basically throttle as much offload, as much demand from our GPU as we can for storage. Like like touch designer is is pretty low level. Like right. as in like you could you could play with memory, you can uh, play with like, you know, chunking up files and, and pre-reading and, and stuff like that. There's a lot of options for that kind of thing and even shaders. Uh, those are the kind of things that you can kind of let go, like Jesus take the wheel with the GLSL <laughs> shader and then let the hard drive, you know, kind of feed in, you know, the, the, the pre-cache video content so that when we start doing like blending, kind of unload that video and, and wipe it from RAM or, get it uh, off the GPU, let the JLSL do the thing, and then kind of blend in the other one, or, or hard switch and stuff like that. There's like a million ways to do it. Um, I, think, I think now we're meeting in the middle, and I think storage is now gonna start playing a bigger role in uh, the kind of professional applications and video game applications, which is really important because not everybody is a jewel who's gotta access you know, terabytes of video data all the time. Um, but yeah, sp speed is king uh, because I don't think we'll ever escape the need for rasterized content. Yeah, and I think the other thing too is like we want as little bottlenecking, right? Like do you reliance on pretty much VRAM at this point in time for a lot of things? Yeah. All of a sudden, if I can start direct writing at ridiculous speeds to the GPU directly from storage or the GPU directly from RAM or whatever it was, that all makes a big difference. And PCIe Gen 4 and, you know, as it gets faster is only gonna help that stuff. Yeah, yeah, and and especially at, at, at glorious frame rates, yeah. right? Which is, I mean, fat, it's, it's always night and day. We were, we were <laughs> I, I, I wanna say we were probably the first electronic music touring thing that was running our content at 60 Hertz. For, you know, 60 frames a second. I mean, I, it's nice, it's so smooth. I can't tell, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm like, great, I gained on 60 forever and ever and ever. I just, you know, on a whim going, you know what, I'm gonna buy the expensive monitor today I'm, and the I'm, good video card. I'm excited about what you're about to just say. And, I, like, I'm, like, and then been... 140 hertz, I was like, what? the hell have I been doing? You know what I mean? And, it, and then I sucked at every game oh, uh, imaginably for a week. And that's precision. And I can't go back. Yeah. I cannot go back. Me watching 60 frames per second, this is the most vainest thing I've ever said, is like going back to cable. Yeah. I'm like, I can't look at this. And then you go to a concert and you're looking at their LED wall and it's 24. Oh. I just, I just want to die. Yeah. You know, yeah. so so that's always been a big thing with me is you know the high frame rate does make a difference. If you if you sat by if you stood behind a, a kid playing um, you know PUBG at sixty and and then another kid playing the same game at like one hundred forty, you're like, yeah, oh that looks yeah. way better. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's this, it's that, and then there's a lot of perceived betterment yes. that comes from a high FPS. That's not just an FPS. It's like you know, motion tends to look a little like more real. Yeah. A lot of people know you for music and everything else, but they don't know how much you're into game. Like we just like pretty much geeked out and jumped across both of those pretty uh, pretty easily. Tell me a little bit about what got you into games. Like how long have you been gaming? What was the first PC you ever had? Uh, the first PC I ever had, I had this uncle. He okay. was the guy. Okay. You know the the dude. He's yep. he he had the he was the one that got me into like you know oh yeah, Commander Keen and, yep. and, and and Jazz Jackrabbit and we could never really like get one for the home kind of thing and we had no need for one. Yep. My dad worked in um, uh, manufacturing and my mom worked in mum things. You know? Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. You know, we had no need for a computer. There was no email. There was right. no nothing. You know, it was just kind of a novelty item for the home. Yep. Right. The music wasn't a thing. Uh, so on, on PC, uh, so it was like, I did do piano lessons and all this stuff and I had an interest in music, but just like there was PC speakers yep. and that's it. This is pre sound blaster stuff. But then as that kind of came to be where the sound blaster could do ADPCM audio, then came along the trackers and yep. stuff like that. And I thought, wow, you can actually make music on a computer to some degree, yep. right? And that was really fun. And that's, that's that begun my dead mouse journey. Uh, that was the start of it. And um, part of that was just kind of the Christmas or something, you know, like, hey, I really want, you know, a, a 486 yeah. or something like that. And so I think my first actual, like, kind of one that I did work on was uh, a 486. Uh, you know, yes. I, I started on, um, you know, trackers and stuff like that, all the old school DOS music making programs, but then also kind of put me in gaming 
for PC, yep. which was like, again, top spec, what, Commander Keen stuff, you know, um, Duke Nukem and uh, all, all those kind of... Doom and... Uh, not quite Doom. Doom. Not, no, okay. it wasn't quite good enough. Like, okay. it was a little... Uh, but it worked. Uh, Wolfenstein, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wolfenstein 3. <clears throat> for sure. I think one of the things that people don't remember about Wolfenstein was just the soundscape of that game for the first time. Like, hearing doors open and... Oh, any four of channels of it. Yeah. It was insane. <laughs> but it was. I mean, but like, in the end, like, it really... Like, it, it did, did any of that ever impact, like, when you heard music from that and stuff, is that the stuff that kind of got you into that? Yeah, because that was all very tracker based. They yeah. were they were MIDI files that just basically ran through a, a kind of tracker based sound engine that was like uh, 40k b of uh, you know lines of code that just basically said you know when when this MIDI file gets to this point, just play this like GM sound that was either embedded in the game yeah. or or optionally you could suss it out to like MIDI hardware that had a MIDI input yep. and stuff like that. So people, game, music in games actually at one point required an external MIDI player device. Like the music you were actually hearing was coming from another device, right. not your PC. Right. It was yep. just sending over the MIDI information. So gaming was like that for like a long time. But then, you know, uh, Sound Blaster came along and uh, Turtle Beach and all that yeah. stuff and they started putting MIDI chips onto mm -hmm. these things. That's when they were like, why are we using MIDI? We just yeah. embed the sounds on the hard drive and have the hard I played out through the ADPCM converter on the card. What are some of the things we can look forward to and what are some of the things that are happening for Dead Mouse um, and Joel moving forward? It's about setting up businesses and and culminating the next you know uh, right. thing whether it's music or tech or, or whatever so we've done a lot of things like in that in that realm uh, the first one was start a record label but I, I, I like a little more than that. I like I like technology and, and games and, and this and that. So we've also spun up an agency called Pixel Links, mm -hmm. which is a, a digital agency for creators who aren't programmers. You know, not all creators are programmers or, or know about video games and, and how they work and stuff like that. So we're Pixel Link is going to basically act as a bridge between you know creators, musicians who just exclusively work on their thing and don't know anything about video games, but don't know. And then the video games, right? The business side of that. They, they need that stuff, yeah. right? But they, these conversations that happen over that bridge usually die or get confused or whatever because programmers talk to programmers and, and musicians know how to talk to musicians, but we're gonna act as that that yeah. go between. We'll, we'll summarize it as, you know, being kind of taking a back seat uh, on the mouse head when, as I approach my 50s and more a front seat in uh, culminating creation in, in digital media. And I say that as in like video games, videos, musicians, music releases, all anything created with a computer. I think we're going to have a, a good hand in just to keep my mind uh, afloat. So Joel, I just want to say thank you so much for coming, hanging out, spending a little time with us in your very busy schedule and what I expect to be more busy now yeah. based on the stuff coming out. And uh, just looking forward to honestly seeing some of the stuff that's going to be coming out here uh, in 2021 and on. 2021 was a was a big homely year for us. We just sat around, developed tools, worked with companies, curated ideas and relationships and stuff like that. So I think 2022 is like our year of action, I think. I'm excited. Cool. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, man. Thanks again to Dead Mouse for your time. Speed innovations in NVMe SSDs aren't just about changing how games are played. They're also about changing how games are built. Here to unpack the complexities of game development and the importance of NVMEs in that process is industry-leading RPG developer CD Projekt Red. Hi, my name is Marcin Kulikowski and I'm a senior build engineer and c -sharp programmer at CD Projekt Red. I do a lot of work around building pipelines and workflow creation and making sure that they are properly implemented in the project. I also work on the development of in-house DevOps tools and our in-house build system, as well as managing the build tools used by our dev teams. I'm Rafał Bremski, a c -sharp engineer at CD Projekt Red. In my role, I perform maintenance of our build system, so writing code, making sure software is up to date and machines are running at optimal performance. Cyberpunk 2077 is an ambitious open-world RPG. It features a really strong focus on player immersion via its first-person camera. The game is set in huge, futuristic megalopolis of Night City, where greedy megacorporations rule and cybernetic implants are everywhere. As the player, you explore this city and become sucked into the mercenary underworld, meeting a ton of memorable characters along the way. 
What speaks to me the most in Cyberpunk 2077 are those characters and stories we tell with them. It's so immersive getting to know these individuals, spending time with them, following their quest lines. You really connect with these people and they feel real and believable. Of course, building a city this dense and complex, you're bound to run into some technical challenges. From internal network bandwidth to larger scale operations, such as building a dynamic global illumination system for the entire open world. We also have some cool innovative solutions to help us gain visual feedback from the game. For example, we have a web-based map of Night City, which shows us heat maps that help us visualize data really intuitively. To build a game like this, well, you really need a lot of expertise from many different areas of development. Programmers, artists, producers, testers, designers and beyond. It's a large-scale team effort across the whole studio. All they work, all the technology and hardware used throughout development leads us to having the thing we aim for from the beginning, the game build. Our build system is the main tool we use that allows us to put builds together, including input from many different teams, all working on different parts of the project. For Cyberpunk 2077, the build system is a highly advanced automation environment. It basically provides a way to automate and streamline all the different processes needed for teams to work in a multi-branch manner. It's a sophisticated system that handles a huge variety of tasks. Building and deploying shaders, the deployment of editor packages for designers, developer game builds and retailer-ready game builds for different platforms. It handles the generation of procedural game data, such as collisions, UI icons, minimap data, and the processing of audio data too. These are just some of the many things our build system handles. And in addition to being this really powerful, cohesive production tool, it acts as an information hub too. Our team will use the build system to see the real-time information and statistics about the current state of the game. Any recent changes, functional tests and so on. So it not only helps us build the game and bring it to life, but also monitor it and maintain it for future development. Currently, Cyberpunk 2077 build system contains more than 150 machines with more than 200 active users. But this number can be much more, as every dev in the studio can use it for their work. The system runs 24-7, all year round, with virtually no downtime at all, and it works for all the projected studios, no matter the location. Thanks to Seagate SSDs, we've seen a great boost to performance, widening the possibilities of the build system. Since implementing the drives, we've run more than 800,000 builds altogether, including 60,000 game package deployments and over 20,000 world builds. The data from this is later used by all the other processes and developers, so they can run them inside the game editor. So it's pretty intensive from a sheer performance perspective. Even with this level of usage, we haven't had a single drive hamper our efforts or fail on us. I can't stress enough how essential hardware reliability is for projects of this magnitude. It makes all the difference in the world. When you have a hardware you know you can rely on, it gives you a peace of mind. It helps you avoid real nightmare scenarios. Imagine you're putting together a milestone build test, making sure everything is in place and ready for testers to start work on. And the build fails because of storage issue, something totally out of your control. With drives like this from Seagate, situations like that become much less of a concern. And as well as being a powerful safety net, these drives are real performance masters. I can talk a lot about how people tend to upgrade everything in their PC besides the storage, then not seeing the performance boost they expected. These NVMe SSDs eliminate small or slow disk bottlenecks and maximize the performance of individual machines. The drives really improve the utilization of other system resources too, such as the GPU, CPU and network drives. And having more space to work with really complements our multi-branch environment. It means we can have many workspaces with no downtime when switching branches on the same machine. And we can also execute more resource-intensive tasks in parallel on a single machine. This makes things way more efficient and cuts down time spent waiting for things to process by a huge amount. Flexibility is a really important factor. With space and speed not limiting us, we can afford to store and retain a lot of built artifacts, no matter how much space they take. And it speeds up our deployments too. Now it can take less than four and a half hours to deploy retail-ready packages in one go. That's quite the upgrade. As a longtime game developer, that was an eye-opening experience for me. I feel like we truly are in a paradigm shift for gameplay. 
All right, we've gone deep into the hardware of your gaming setups. Now, let's talk a little bit about the experience. Because any gamer will tell you, gameplay isn't complete without the perfect atmosphere. Now here with us now are our friends at Razer, creators of the Razer Chroma RGB, showing us just how immersive you can get with your gaming atmosphere experience. And not just with the game or PC itself, but all the way around, even with external devices like Seagate's Fire Cuda Gaming Hub. Let's check it out. Razer Chroma RGB is the world's largest lighting ecosystem for gaming devices. We support thousands of devices and have over 200 natively integrated games and applications with over 20 million active users today. And with IoT and smart home integration, we are integrating the smart desktop with the smart home. Razer Chroma is all about building the ultimate gamer's battle station for that truly immersive lighting experience. Today, we're thrilled to have Seagate join the Razer Chroma RGB ecosystem. And together with the new range of Fire Cuda devices, we want the ability for users to sync their lighting effects across all of their devices and build that native experience across the gamer's desktop. We'd like to thank Seagate Gaming for all of their support and we wish them all the success going forward. Don't just play your games. With innovations like we just saw, you can now truly experience them. And thanks again to Razer for leading the way on RGB integration. Now for the fun part, putting all of these products together. PCIe Gen 4 impacts the whole system, so every piece of hardware should be working together to give you the full power capacity that these advancements unlock. PC Specialist is one of the best custom PC builders in the gaming industry, and their amazing team has put together the cutting edge machine that we will be giving away right here in just a few minutes. Here's a word from our buddy Valkia on how PC Specialist can help you get the most out of a PCIe Gen 4 battle station. And then stay tuned to see if you are the lucky person who's going to get to take this custom rig home. Hi, I'm Valkia and I'm a PC Specialist Ambassador. I've been a PC gamer since I was like 10 years old, so PC gaming hardware has always been really important to me. PC Specialist is a manufacturer of laptops and computers with a track record of providing highly optimized and performance systems. Using the PC Specialist configurator, you can configure your system the way you want it to be. And now you can unleash the power of PCIe 4.0 with one of Seagate's FireCuda SSDs. Let's talk storage. Make sure your SSD doesn't become your bottleneck. FireCuda Performance, built specifically for professional level gamers. Seagate FireCuda SSDs are blazing fast, they have lasting endurance, and they have large capacities for every game that you're ever going to need. When you purchase a FireCuda drive, a rescue recovery data plan is included for three years. You'll have access to a global team of world-class data recovery experts in case of unexpected data loss. Let's take a look at cooling. PCIe Gen 4 means heat, so we're going to need to make sure that our system's temperatures stay nice and optimal. PC Specialist has a wide range of water coolers and air coolers to ensure maximum airflow and that our system's temperatures stay nice and chilly. The PC Specialist configurator also makes sure that you don't have two components that aren't compatible and every single system goes through a thorough stress test to make sure that the temperatures are optimal and that the system is running as expected. PCIe Gen 4 performance requires some serious power and the PC Specialist Configurator will guide you through and tell you which power supply you need for the system that you're picking. And finally, let's bring everything together inside one case. PC Specialist offers a wide variety of cases which you can then customize with RGB, sound dampening for anything from PC gaming all the way to workstations. Configure a Seagate FireCuda system at PC Specialist now. Thank you again to all of our partners who made this build possible. I may be biased, but that is one heck of a machine. It's a cutting edge, custom rig, built with some of the best hardware on the market, including Seagate's Fire Cuda 530 for that peak PCIe Gen 4 SSD performance. Plus, we've paired the machine with some killer peripherals from Razer. 
This machine has everything for the PCIe Gen 4 gamer to bring their gameplay into the future. And now is the time to reveal if that gamer is you. Between May 24th and June 14th, Seagate received thousands of entries on Seagate.com. The winner was picked at random from all of those entries. So, are you ready? The winner is... Congratulations, you will be taking home this amazing custom PC made possible by Seagate and our generous partners, built with love from some incredible PC builders like moi. PCIe Gen 4 is the heart of gaming now, and the innovations in hardware and gameplay are only getting bigger and better. I think the doors to the future have opened, and Seagate and today's partners are certainly forging that path. But we want to hear from you. What were you excited about? How are you upgrading your machines and what's needed that we can address? Head over to Seagate Gaming on Twitter and Instagram and get involved in the discussion. Or find me at Robitech and let's build the PCs of tomorrow together. Now, if you'd like to check out more from Seagate Gaming, be sure to check out Inside Gaming with Seagate. It's an original web series on the latest and greatest in PC and console gaming, hosted by my good friend, Patrick Macca, available over on YouTube. On behalf of Seagate and all of our partners, thank you for joining us at SG21. Here's to the future, happy gaming.